right. So. Nice. It's directly. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. George is in here. Jack, Marco, Martin, Nigel. We've got some more people jumping in here. And um, there we go. I uh, just wanted to welcome Jean Baptiste, known as JB. He's from WP Rocket. This is going to be a exciting training, and it's really a hot topic in the WordPress LMS community for people building online courses and training-based membership sites. Hold on, I need to hit record, and I'm going to start that over. Thank you for reminding me, Kathy. All right, hello and welcome to this webinar training. I'm joined by Jean Baptiste. That's JB. He's from a WordPress company called WP Rocket. This presentation is about how to make your website faster. Um, WP Rocket's been in the space for about seven years, which is awesome. Fo focused on the problem of website speeds in WordPress. First, Jean Baptiste, thank you for coming in front of the Lift LMS and the course building community. We really appreciate it. It's great to have you here. Yeah, thank you so much. That's great to be there as well. I'm excited to this this community here. The people on this call are really into learning and getting better, and um, as a kind of a culture and a community value. But also because the people who build online courses and training based membership sites, the website is the business. It's not just a brochure for the business. So it's super. They're super focused on making sure the platform is high quality. That this that uh, their customers or their learners have a great user experience and speed plays a big part in part of that. And there's people in this audience who have different levels of technical ability. Some are kind of new, even brand new to WordPress. Other are advanced power users building these types of sites for clients. So there's, it's a broad mix and um, we're looking to learn from you today. Um, we are going to, be uh, doing a Lifter LMS giveaway at the end of this training. So if you're here with us live or you're watching on YouTube, we'll put a link below the YouTube video so that you can jump over and join the live webinar. Uh, we're going to be doing a $99 giveaway of one of the Lifter LMS add-ons, or you can use that value against something else. If you're already a customer, we will hook you up in a different way. So I'd encourage you to stay to the end. <clears throat> also, we have a caching expert. We have a speed expert with us today. So please ask lots of questions. Um, you can use the chat. You can also use the Q&A box. If you're watching this on YouTube, we'll keep an eye on the comments over there. And um, we'll save the questions to the end to really kind of get into it. So Jean, Jean Baptiste can get into his flow. Um, and uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into the Q&A. Um, and that's really it on the housekeeping. Uh, I'll hand it over to you, Jean, and take us home. Teach us about speed, teach us about WP Rocket. How can we level up with our websites, which are the biggest asset we have as course creators? Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, so uh, the idea is really to, to teach about speed and not definitively about a specific tools. It's just to uh, tell you, okay, what is caching? Why speed is important? What are uh, the information I can get and basically how I can make my website faster and my user more happy. Um, so let me share my screen. Uh, just need to use this one. So perfect. Is Do you have my screen with I do. Uh, presentation? Yep. Okay, wonderful. Um, so just brief uh, introduction about me, but that's not really important. Um, so I have a a very long name, uh, the full name, and that's the first time I'm going to say it is Jean-Baptiste Marchandier, but people call me JB. Um, so I'm the co-founder and CEO of WP Media, and at WP Media, we are focused on have, helping people having a faster website. Um, and for that, we have two main products. The first one uh, is WP Rocket. It's a caching plugin uh, for WordPress, of course, uh, which helps you having a faster website. And it's used by almost 1 million of websites. And Congratulations one, on that. That's a lot of users, a yes. million, almost a million. That's a lot of responsibility, too. <laughs> oh, yes. Each time we provide a new update, we want to make sure that everything is working perfectly uh, for our users and to be sure that we are not slowing down uh, their websites. 
Um, and the other one is uh, Imagify, uh, which is a tool to allow you to optimize your images. So basically to make them uh, smaller without losing quality. Um, and we are optimizing about 2 million of images per day. Uh, and of course, we have uh, a WordPress plugin for that. Um, so about, um, about a fast website, you might ask yourself, OK, why is it important to have a fast website? Um, the, this, the answer is really easy. Um, it's, do you like to wait? Uh, so I'm going to ask you the question, Chris, do you like to wait people? Do you, do, do you like to wait when a website is loading? Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, so congratulations, you are like everyone. We don't hate, we don't like, sorry, uh, to wait. Um, and that's why people don't like uh, slow websites. And usually the answer when you have to wait is you close uh, the page and you are going to another website. So for us as website owners, it's really, really important to be sure that our websites load fast. Otherwise, our visitors are going to uh, go to the competitors and not only our visitors, but also uh, Google because uh, you know, Google have a lot of crawlers, so that small bots who go to your website to uh, get the information. But if your website is too slow, uh, Google will spend much more time to go to all your website. And it does, even if Google has a big budget, his budget is not unlimited for your website, which means that if it takes too long, he's not going to go too much on your website. So he's, it is going to probably penalize your SEO. Um, and also, let's imagine you are selling things on your website, which is usually the case with uh, LMS. Um, if people are waiting too long, they are not going to buy on your website because they are not going to trust you. If uh, it takes 10 seconds to go on your pricing page or when they, go, when they are going to pay, they might be not happy about that and they are going to leave. So that's something which is really important to consider is everyone want to go into a fast website. And even if, you know, our bandwidth is bigger and bigger uh, when you access, uh, when with your internet access, the websites also are bigger and bigger. And sometimes you all can be on your mobile with a poor connection. And it's still very important uh, that your website is fast all the time. And with this presentation, I'm going to try at least to teach you all the basics, the basics of how to make your website faster. Uh, so it's going to be a bit theoretically, but also I'm going to go concretely into tools, into uh, things, uh, concrete things in order to make your website faster. There are so many solutions and <laughs> there are a lot <laughs> uh, to make your website faster. Um, one is something the more certainly the most important is what we call a good cache policy. And I'm going to explain a little bit what is cache because we're going to see that there are so many different type of cache and usually people don't really know about what is cache and what are the different uh, type of caching. Uh, we are going to, to do some technical things but not too difficult because there is a lot of different people here. Um, and what is really the most important is to think and to try to have common sense about your website. So just to give you a small example about common sense, it's not by installing 100 of plugins or eight uh, performance plugins that your website is going to be faster. But let's go first uh, into cache. And that's usually one of the biggest issue is people always hear about cache, but okay, you need to enable cache on your website, you need to clear your cache, you need to have broader cache, blah, blah, blah. And, but the thing is people don't really know what is cache. And even if it's really, really easy, it can be difficult to define in a few words. Uh, so Chris, I'm going to ask you, sorry <laughs> um, about that. Do you know? Are you able to define in like a small sentence what is cache? For me, a cache is a a snapshot of your website that's not loaded dynamically from the database 
That's kind of my understanding, if I had to say it simply. Yeah, that's a great answer. And this is the perfect answer for static cache. And this is what do caching plugins usually. Uh, but the, the concept of caching, it's much more bigger, in fact. Um, and we have cache everywhere. We have cache into our phone, into our border, into servers, into DNS, into everything. And so basically cache, I'm going to ask everyone who is listening uh, some kind of rhetorical question. So if I'm going to ask you uh, right now, what is the result of this uh, multiplication, uh, which is displayed uh, on my screen, you're not going to know the answer right now. What you are going to do is open your calculator, type it and see the answers. Uh, but if I'm going to ask you, so let's imagine you, you did the math and you have the results. And uh, let's imagine I'm asking you in 10 seconds, what is the answer? You're going to give me the answer because you have just calculated and you are, you are still in memory. And basically this is cache. It's storing an information temporary. Uh, and you have stored an information of a simple equation, but usually that can be much more bigger. And what is important with cache is the, the temporary definition. Because tomorrow, let's imagine I'm seeing you again, I'm going to ask you the same question, you will have forget about that and you will need to recalculate that. Uh, so this is ba basically what is cache is storing temporary and information which is going to be reused later. And since website or lots of information at dynamics, usually cache are something small, like one day, two days, one week, something like that. And it's going to uh, depend on the, um, the information by itself. Let's imagine you want to, to display on your website uh, your number of Twitter followers. So you are going to ask Twitter, okay, how many uh, followers do I have? And you are, going to, you are going to retrieve this information and store it temporarily because you don't need to display it uh, a different number every seconds or every minute. So you are going to store this information during one week or one day, depends on, on, your, on your account. Uh, which, um, and this is good because you don't need to ask all the time Twitter and it's going to be faster. So this is the concept of cache. And there are so many kinds of cache for your website. And the, the first one, which is uh, very easy to understand and very easy to set up is what we call browser cache. So what it is, it's uh, some kind of memory into your browser. So my browser is this one. It's uh, right now Google Chrome, but it can be a Safari, Firefox, or any kind of other browser. And every browser have information have some have a small memory into it in order to display in a faster way all the websites. And um, so with browser cache, we are providing information to the browser to store for a specific time different files. Um, so these files are usually what we call static files. Static files into a websites are usually the big files like CSS, JavaScript, images, or videos. But let's imagine I'm going back to, your, to, to a website and I'm displaying the same image. There is no reason to, to request it again to the server because I could have simply stored it into my memory of the browser and just displayed it. And that would have been much more faster and the server would have less work. And this is what we, what we do and it's really simple. Um, on static cache, on static files, we are putting some information into the server to say, okay, this file, so let's say this image or all the images, you are going to say to the border that he need to store it for six months because an image doesn't change because it has a name. So the browser will keep into his, his memory this image and each time I'm going back to the website and the image is request, it's directly the browser which is going to display it. We do that for images, CSS, JavaScript. And for that, we can, do, we can use, sorry, two methods. It's a bit technical, but still important to, to explain a little bit. 
The first one, we can use uh, expires. Um, so expires, we give uh, to the border the information uh, with a specific date. For example, with this one, with this specific expire, we say to the border, hey, keep this file or this any, any kind of content until October 2042 into your uh, memory, which means that in 2043, he won't have the file into his memory. Or we can use the cache control. So cache control, we say, okay, keep this file during two hours, one month, six months, 10 years, whatever. So we, we, have, we can have really a specific, a specific um, a criteria. It's a date or a max, maximum age to keep it into the memory. And uh, the browser is uh, storing the information related to the name, which means that he's going to go into a website and he's going to request, for example, style.css, which is a file to display the, the, the style, the, the, yeah, the CSS of the file, of the, of the website. And he's going to keep this file and all the content. But let's imagine you are going to update this file in order to change uh, how your website is displayed. Or let's imagine you are doing an update on your plugin, on your themes, and he's updating the content of the style.css. The issue is most of the browser will still have the content of the old file. So they won't be able to display the new one. And so we have a solution for that and it's really easy. We um, use what we call versioning. So this is what we, we use at the end. Usually you might have seen that at the end of some files like CSS or, yeah, or, or um, JavaScript. Uh, there is usually this interrogation mark and a number at the end. So 1.2, 1.3 and since the name is a bit different. The browser will say, hey, I don't have this version into my cache, so I need to retrieve it the new one. And this is why you can have new content. And that's why sometimes people say, hey, have you cleared your cache? Uh, because I don't see the new website or the new style. And in fact, you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't need to clear your cache. Uh, that's because <laughs> You, the developer should have implemented some update on the file name. And a small warning, but all these things you won't need, uh, we are going to see just after, you won't need to do it directly because we have some plugins to do that and you won't need to code that. Everything is automatic though. So don't worry about that. But just a warning theoretically um, is something which is important is you should never, never cache uh, the all HTML for the browser. Why? Because the HTML doesn't, it's not directly a file and you, you can't change the name of the file because it's always like index.html. And so you can't, you can't put numbers at the end because you can't really change, uh, you can't really change the name, which means that if you cache the HTML and you do some update to the browser, your users won't be able to see them because they are not updated. So just, if, just keep in mind, if you want to do it manually, never cache your HTML. Um, sorry. Okay, more, a bit more technical, but still um, easy. And let's try to make a bit easy. Um, another one is what we call PHP cache. So you might know that WordPress is um, a CMS uh, coded with uh, PHP and LMS as well. And PHP is what we call an interpreted language. In fact, this means that when you are uh, putting some PHP file on your server, your server is going to, for it at each request, is going to read the PHP file and to rewrite it to into some kind of different language, which is going to be compiled. And this language will be able uh, should, will be read by the machine by itself because the server can't really execute uh, PHP itself. You need to be uh, rewritten into another language. And this is done by your server. The thing is, 
it's not very fast because each time uh, we are requesting a PHP file, the server is going to read the, all the content and we write it uh, into another language. And so that's why uh, we have what we call a PHP cache. It's what we call OP code. OP cache, sorry, the OP code is uh, the, the new code which is generated by the server. And OP cache, it's really easy. And what it does, he's going to store uh, the new language, which is the new file which is generated in order to not generate it each time. So it's really easy and something which is great. And that's why common sense is important. Since uh, PHP 5.5, so this is a, a version of PHP, it's automatic and it's enabled by default. We, this is why it's always important when we are talking about performance, but for security or for any kind of different things to always uh, update. Today, PHP 5.5 is very old. Uh, we are at version 7.3, I think, or 7.4. I don't remember exactly. So it's yeah, a few years ago. But when we go on some website of our customer, we, we still see very old version of PHP. Um, and at the end, it makes their websites slow. So a small advice about that is always go to hosting uh, who have really uh, good updates on their um, on the server uh, to be sure that they have uh, the latest PHP version. This is usually the case. Uh, so yeah, just follow the recommendation you can have about a good hosting like we know are working well with WP Engine and they are always they always have great version of PHP. So some tips, but still very important. Um, next one, still a bit technical, but it might, it's going to be important. Um, into WordPress, so it's really more for developers. I'm going to, to go very fast just for information. Uh, but if you are not a developer, you are not going to use this. So WordPress uh, have, uh, natively is what we call um, object cache uh, and transient. So um, how to explain that easily? Uh, so the ID, this is a PHP function directly uh, created by WordPress and you can use it into WordPress to store uh, information into a specific uh, area of the database. The ID, I'm going to use again the the Twitter example. Let's imagine you are going to, uh, you want to display the latest tweets of your account, of your Twitter accounts on your website. Or you want to, you want to display your, yeah, let's say, let's continue with the, with the tweet. So you want to display the, the, the latest tweets of your accounts. What you can do is requesting Twitter API to display it. But the issue we'll have is uh, every request, so each time a visitor is going to go to your website, your website will go request to Twitter to display it. It's not very efficient uh, because the idea is we want to just load what is necessary. So into WordPress, what we can do is using uh, object cache or transient in order to store all the tweets temporary and to say, okay, if you don't have the information, store it into WordPress for like two hours and automatically after two hours, your information will be deleted and you will be able to request it again. And this is great information, a great way to display quickly information. Um, ah, I'm going to give you uh, an example directly into WP Rocket. Uh, so let me, Okay, here it is. So here, this is a number of websites we have. In order to have this information, we need to go through all our database to, in order to count the number of websites, which is, uh, which is a long uh, request. And we store the, this information into WordPress cache and we delete it like every six hours because we don't need to have the exact number. So this is very useful. Um, and let's move to 
what Chris to told me about, about static cash. And this is usually what is going to have the huge impact on your website in terms of performance. Um, so just to give you a little bit of uh, context and uh, example on concretely how WordPress is displaying a page. So I'm going to use this example again. So I'm going into WP Rocket website. When I'm on the home page, WordPress is going to do a lot of requests to say, hey, there is a visitor on the home page. Can you give me the home page? Can you give me the content? Okay, I need to go into the database to grab all the content of the page. Um, is the user login? Because if he's login, I need to display something different. So as you might see and understand, there is so much things WordPress needs to do with PHP and MySQL. And this is a lot of calculation. And this can be slow, very slow, especially if you have a tons of traffic or if you have a tons of uh, dynamic things, because the more dynamics your website is, the more requests in a way he needs to do into the database and the slower it can get. And so the, the, the idea is very basic is, I mean, here, as you can see, we don't change that much the content. There is no reason to just display the fresh content from the database all the time a visitor is going into a website. So the idea is we ask WordPress to give us the content, so to the database, et cetera, and PHP, and we store it as a file, as a HTML file, we, and we store it into the server. So we, it's like we do a screenshot of the page. And now when another visitor is going to go into the website, WP Rocket or any other caching plugin, they do the same. They give the screenshot to the visitor, which means that it's instant. There is no need to load all WordPress, to load all the PHP, all the MySQL requests. It just give me the screenshot. So it's really, it's, it's very basic, but it's working very well. But there is something which is important and that's why a caching plugin is, uh, is, could be difficult. Uh, is, as you might know, WordPress is still dynamic. I mean, let's imagine you, have, you are creating a new product on your website or you are uh, creating a new blog post. Uh, your homepage or your blog page is going to be updated. And so if we display the screenshot, the screenshot is the old one. Uh, and so that's what does um, a caching plugin like WP Rocket is each time you update a content uh, or you, yeah, there is something which is happening on your website. We just remove the screenshot and generate a fresh one. And so this is why it's important as well to use a caching plugin, not to code your own solution if you can do it because it integrates all the good uh, things in order to always be sure that uh, there is a fresh screenshot of your website which is displayed. And also WP Rocket or also caching plugin, they don't do only that. What is important is performance is not like one thing. It's, it's going to be a sum of big things like static cache, but also putting correctly browser cache like all, all the good things we need to do to make your uh, website faster, which is directly uh, bundled into one plugin. And this is what we, sorry, what we wanted to do with WP Rocket is putting all our knowledge of performance experts, all the good things we were doing to our website manually to make it automatic. And you don't need to be, uh, huge expert and to understand all the performance things in order to make your website faster. Because we think that this is our responsibility to take the, de the decision for you to enable what is important for your website to make it faster. So by default, uh, with WP Rocket, for example, when you enable, the browser cache is automatically enabled, the static cache as well. All the cache that we can set up for you are automatically enabled. But of course, there is not only WP Rocket, there, is, there are tons of 
other great solution for you in order to um, to make your website faster. And I would really recommend you to test the different solution because you might prefer another one. And so there is WC Total Cache, there is WP Super Cache, WP Rocket. There is yeah a lot of other caching plugin. Um, and you know. <laughs> What we see is people are never happy <laughs> and, and you will be never happy with your performance. And that's a good thing because you always want more and because Google always want, wants more about your website. And that's great because at the end, your users will be happy. Um, so there is a lot of things you can do. The first thing, uh, again, common sense is just update, uh, update everything you can which is your web server, if you can, your version of PHP, if you can have, have access to that, your version of WordPress, everything. Let's, if you, your, your plugins are uh, putting some updates, do it uh, because usually it's faster with the new updates. So every developers we know are really focused on how uh, they can make your, their plugin or their themes uh, faster. So just a date. This is definitively a good thing. Also, we have seen that, I mean, you can have all the good practice on your websites, uh, caching plugin, updates, but if you are on a poor hosting, that's not going to work because if, if, they, are, if they have low resource, if everything is slow, it's not going to work. So be sure to, yeah, to use a good hosting, which is trustable, which is recommended, and yeah, and this is going to be very, a big change for you. Another thing uh, that uh, WP Rocket do, uh, but other caching, uh, not directly cache plugins, but uh, other plugins do, is what we call Minify. Um, I'm going probably to give you an example of what is Minify. Uh, yes, this one, okay. Um, so this is what we call a CSS file here. So this is yeah, code in order to display things into my website. And as you might see, everything is compressed. There is no, there is no empty lines. Um, and this is what is minification, is removing all the um, comments into a code, all the blank lines in order to make it smaller. That's definitely not a game changer, but that's small things which make uh, your website faster. Um, and automatically, um, some plugins like Auto Optimize or WP Rocket are going to uh, retrieve all your CSS, all your files, uh, and we move all the things which are not necessary to make them smaller at the end. And you guess, I guess you know that the more um, more your website is small in terms of size more in the faster it's going to be. Um, and yes, another thing which is important. Uh, we, yeah, it's about this, about 60% of your, uh, of the size of your website is just about images, uh, which is huge. Um, and so if you find a way to reduce the number of image you display on your website, this is going to help a lot. Uh, but there is a, a good solution because you are not going to remove the image on your website. It's important to, yeah, to have good images. Uh, and in fact, there are two solutions. The first one I'm going to present you is what we call lazy load. The idea I'm going to, sorry, to use again this website uh, is, as you can see here, I am on the home page and I haven't scrolled yet which means that when I come to the website, there is no reason for the browser to load this image, this image, all this image, all the image of my website, which haven't been displayed by my, my browser. And this is basically what does lazy load do. It takes all the image, which are not displayed because I have not scrolled yet and it doesn't load it. And when I scroll, automatically it's going to display it. Uh, so tech, visually you won't see, you shouldn't see anything because each time you scroll, the, the script is going to put the image and to load it, but it's really a huge 
uh, change. Because, uh, for example, here, when I come to this website, no image are loaded until I start scrolling. And as you can see, there is not that much image, but if you sum this one, this one, this one, at the end, it can change a lot. And this is really easy to implement. There are some free plugin which does that. We have uh, released uh, a free plugin, which is called Lazy Load by WP Rocket. And so basically this is our Lazy Load, which is into WP Rocket and we have put it for free uh, into the repository. So you can use it. Um, and yes. And another thing is um, what is really great uh, with image, but not a lot of people know about that is um, an image can be um, much more smaller in terms of size uh, with the same quality. Uh, in terms of, if you look at the image, you won't see any difference uh, in terms of quality, but the size will be about from 20 to 80% smaller, and which is huge because let's imagine you have about, I don't know, it's huge, but sometimes we've seen people with that on their website. You have just 10 megabytes of images on your, on your website, on the home page of your website. And uh, if we can reduce it to five megabytes, it's a huge, change, a huge change, especially if you are on mobile with a poor connection, 10 megabytes is very, very long to load. And this is what we do with uh, our other plugin, it's Imagify. And in one click, we automatically optimize all your images. So you have two solutions. One is, let's imagine you have already a website and you have already a tons of images and we have what we call the bulk optimization. So in one click, we're going to go through all your library and optimize your images. And after, which is great, is uh, each time you are going to upload a new image, Imagify will automatically optimize it. Um, and something, I mean, it was new a few years ago, but let's say it's still new, um, is uh, there is different kind of um, image format. You might know about JPEG, PNG, but there is another one, uh, which is here since many years, which is called WebP. Uh, WebP is a format which is created by Google. It's, it's a great format because it allows you to have much more smaller images compared to JPEG. Uh, but there is one big issue with that is not all browser can display them. For example, Google Chrome, of course, can display it. Uh, but if you go um, with Safari, Safari won't be able to display the WebP. So, I, you, may, you may have seen, uh, you may understand the issue is, let's imagine you are displaying WebP on your website. People with Safari won't be able to see them. So that's what we do with Imagify and all the plugin as well do that, is we create a WebP of your image. And depending on the browser, we, we display the WebP or the G JPEG or the PNG if it's Safari or any other browser which doesn't understand and which is not able to uh, display the web. Um, that's, yeah, that's all about uh, image and something also important and it's still about common sense and it's always like that, or it's most of the time like that, um, is um, don't be careful with the plugins uh, you are using on your website. One, on, one rule which is important is if you don't need it, if you are not using the plugin, just disable it, just remove it. Because there is no reason to have one plugin enabled on your website if you don't, uh, if you don't use it. Because most of the time, it's, it's not 100% 100, 100 true, but most of the time, plugins will add CSS, JavaScript files on your website, which means that this is files which need to be loaded by the browser. These files need to be loaded by your, your users. And if they are not useful, there are no reason to, to load them. So be sure to remove them and to be careful with, with the plugins you want to use because everything has a cost and especially with 
performance. So the more things you are going to to have, the more the more the, the bigger in a way your um, website is going to be. Uh, so I would recommend you when you are uh, using a plugin and if you don't know which one you should use to maybe try two or three different one and see also if there is a difference uh, in terms of performance. And I'm going to show you uh, some tools in order to, to see that. Another thing uh, which is important, which, has a, which can have a big impact is a CDN. Uh, we, there is a lot of people talking about a CDN, but not all people know, know about what it is, uh, concretely a CDN. Uh, it's like usually like cash. Um, so a CDN is very easy. It's um, servers are uh, replicated. In fact, your content, your static files, CSS, Java, JavaScript images are replicated into a lot of different servers all around the world, which allow your visitors uh, to be closer to your content. So as you have guessed with my accent, I'm from France. Uh, if I'm going to, um, to a website which is hosted uh, in United States, uh, even if the fiber is fast, uh, my browser will need to load all the files from the US. And it's long. It's fast, but it's, it's still long. And so the idea of a CDN is the content will be replicated in Paris, in Europe, in Asia, etc. So now when I'm going to the same website, even if it's still located in the US, the CDN will um, uh, load the content directly from a smaller, uh, a closer location, Paris, for example, or any, anywhere in Europe. And this is very, very helpful. And we can see huge, um, huge difference between uh, people using a CDN and people who are not using one if uh, they have traffic all around the world or even, even in USA, USA is big. <laughs> So that can make a big difference. Um, and this is, this is a good transition on how you can, uh, I mean, performance is important, but we need to measure, to measure it into, in any case, uh, because if you just look at your website, you are not going to see if it's fast. So you need to correctly uh, measure and understand how it works. There is usually um, three tools we recommend, uh, especially for beginner and intermediate. Uh, the first one is ping down tools, uh, which is very good in order to get, get your loading time. Another one is GT matrix, which gives you some uh, information about your website on about things you can improve. Um, on your performance. And the last one is their boost, which is so uh, providing some uh, advices on how to make your website faster. Something is really important is uh, be very careful on how you are reading performance grade and how you are interpreting them and how you read the loading time. Because you, I guess most of you are using PageSpeed to uh, measure your loading time. And even if it's really a great tool, it's complicated to analyze it and most of the time, the advice that they are giving are not really, you, you can't really, you can't make them work. And it's, it's very, very difficult. And it's, even if it's a great tool, he can be stupid, like all the tools, in fact. So you need to be sure to understand it, uh, to know what you can do. And I'm going to give you just, just a few examples um, on how you can uh, interpret it and to be sure to be, to, to be very uh, careful about all the things because you need to read everything. Uh, so this is a test from uh, Pingdom um, about a French website. Uh, and as you can see, so this is important to note, this is the loading time. When you see that, usually you can say, okay, this website is pretty fast. We, we think that under Ideally, your website should load under one second, but it's very, very complicated, especially if it's a, a quite big. So if it's be between one and two, we say oh, it's okay. So by looking at this loading time, we can say, okay, this website is quite fast. 
But there is something you might you might see, and I hope you see it, is uh, the page size. Um, this number, 13, uh, almost 14 megabytes, is way too big for a website. Usually, we recommend to yeah to not go over two or three megabytes, maximum five. Uh, so 14 is huge. Um, so this tool, Pingdom, is using um, uh, a fiber to go to the website. So it's not long, but let's imagine your uh, bandwidth is like one megabyte uh, per second uh, with 14 megabyte size. Uh, you will need just 14 seconds just to display all the content, which is huge. So be very careful with numbers and try to analyze everything. And we are going to just uh, go uh, into the details of this uh, result. Uh, so with Pingdom, if you if you go below when you, you have done the test, there is something which is really inter interesting is they give you uh, the, the the size by the content type. And as you've as you've seen here, the image hello are ninety five percent. Uh, of the total size of the image. So if they just use uh, lazy loads or optimize a, their images, they could reduce that to, I don't know, 80%, something like that. And they they would make their website very fast in almost, yeah, something very easy uh, and fast to do. Uh, another thing which is uh, important. And this people don't know usually about that. So when you when you launch um, when you launch a test on your website, uh, Pingdom or the other tools um, are going to give you all the requests. So this is all the things which is done by your website to display it. And as you can, I'm going to zoom a little bit. I don't know if it's work. No, it's not working. Uh, as you might see here, there is a lot of requests which are done to Facebook, to Instagram, to Facebook again, to Facebook again, to Facebook again, oh, again to Instagram. And this is very long to do because um, it's another request to do. And when it's not on your server, there is a lot of HTTP thing to do, like open a connection, do a DNS request, and this is long. And so I've highlighted this. So just to display a number of like, I guess this is to display um, a like box into the website. It takes almost it, it takes 500 milliseconds uh, just to display that, uh, which is too way long. So this is something important I want to say about performance: is um, it's always balance. Uh, so yes, you can display uh, you can display this like box, but it will affect your users. So you might think about another solution to uh, to display this, which would make things much more faster. So I gave you the example of having a transient or storing this uh, into a database or something else. And this would have uh, a huge impact on your website. Um, what's more? Something, uh, so this is GT matrix and something uh, important I want to show. And this is two, we have only two slides. So uh, we are at the end of this presentation. Uh, when you do uh, a GT matrix test, he's going to give you a grade, but more important at the end, he's going to give you a lot of recommendation. And this is important to read them basically. And because when you click on each items here, this is going to, uh, to uh, be displayed and with more content because you can say, okay, I need to, I think this is the example I, I take. I need to leverage broader caching. What does that mean? That means that the resource you are loading are, they don't have broader cache um, uh, information. So basically that means that the server is not telling the browser to save it into this memory, which is bad. But if, and I hope this is, yes. But if we open this information, we can see that the first files are about uh, the website. So elise.fr and it's okay. So this need to be changed. But if we look 
uh, at the end. I don't know if you see, oh, sorry. If you, need, if you look at the end, you will see that there is a lot of other requests which don't have browser cache, but since it's not on your server, you don't have any access to that. So you, you can't have it. And what is, what is fun, but it's required is you see here there is Google Analytics, which has, which has a two hours border cache um, configuration. And if, for example, if you do a page speed test uh, with your website and you have Google Analytics enabled on your website, he is going to give you a bad grade and a bad feedback about browser caching, which is not well configured, just because you are loading Google Analytics. So that's why it's really important to open the information and to read. So here, if I would be the owner of this website, I would fix all the things which is related to my server because I have the, uh, I have the access, I can change it. But never forget that if there is a resource which is not on your server, you don't have access to it. So you can't control any kind of performance thing. So it's important to load the resource on your server. It's not always possible, but if you don't, you need to know that you can't control them. So it's, it's important to notice. And yeah, that was my last slide. So yeah, thank you for uh, your attention. And uh, we have, uh, I guess, some time to, to answer any question you like about performance or whatever. Jean-Baptiste, that was amazing. Thank you thank so you. much. And you're an excellent teacher, which means a lot because it's a um, it's a complicated topic. And if somebody's newer to tech, you gotta there's a lot of principles which you did a great uh, job with. So thank, thank you. you. Stop my sharing screen with you. We've um we've got some questions in the audience, and I've got a bunch of questions for you as well. Um I was wondering, let me just start. Um uh, Nassim's question is, do you have caching standard, uh, a caching standard installation parameters to implement for a Lifter LMS website? And I shared in the chat a, um, a link to our documentation around caching FAQs. And I think the biggest thing that our users run into is they start, if they have caching problems, um, it's usually around the dynamic content like mm -hmm. and and what they hear is they hear their customers saying i can't log in or my login's going to weird places or the password reset is messing up <laughs> so could you speak to that and just provide some clarity some more clarity around like that i, you, I know you're not super familiar with lift lms but what a, where do people get in trouble is that is that is that more from like cheaper more economical hosting that's like caching everything or is it more likely improperly configured cache plugins? I mean, I know it depends, but what are your yeah. thoughts? Most of the time that, that would be about a caching plugin. Um, and the, the answer is really easy. That's because the caching plugin is providing a screenshot, which is static. And yeah. uh, if we don't configure uh, the caching plugin or if the, 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 the caching plugin is not um, coded in a way that um, we know you know, some, some, pa some page shouldn't be cached, never like uh, another page uh, on your website or a login page. Because if you, if you store a screenshot of a login page, it's not going to work because it's need to be dynamic. This is where I am, I'm entering to my website. So what we do, uh, so I don't know exactly the compatibility with uh, Lifter LMS and WP Rocket, but what we do is we always try to work very well um, with the creators of other plugin to make sure that we automatically uh, exclude this kind of pages uh, from WP Rocket Cache. This is, for example, what we do with WooCommerce. Uh, all the pages are automatically excluded, so there is nothing to do. But uh, also, sometimes we can't be compatible di directly with everyone. And the, the solution is, there is two solutions, which is quite basic, is enabling um, logged in uh, cache, which means that everyone who is going to be logged in or who, who is going to be connected to the website will have a different uh, cache, which is, which is going to be his home cache. So that's going to be a, a good solution. And the other one is you have the ability to exclude pages uh, from the cache. So this page won't be cached at all. And that would solve the solution. 
That's great. Um, Literal MS has its own e-commerce system, but it also integrates with WooCommerce if people want to use that. Can you describe like what parts of WooCommerce, like what WooCommerce type pages, you said checkout pages. Is there anything else that should not be cached that's in WooCommerce? Yeah, there is, for example, the account pages uh, usually. And yeah, all, I mean, the, the easier thing is, and you, you think is all the checkout and like yeah. uh, if your order is confirmed. So let's imagine uh, your order is confirmed, but you have the previous order, which is displaying. Sorry, it's not going to work. So this is... Uh, uh, this is going. Um, this is automatically uh, excluded. And a good thing about WooCommerce is they display uh, their usually by default the um, uh, the um, uh, your order, uh, your basket directly. It's directly dynamic. So and even if the the page is cached, it's still dynamic. So there is nothing to worry about. I see. That makes sense. Um, what is it? Like help the users understand when uh, they contact a plugin company, whether it's Lifter or somebody else for support and support says, clear your cache and see if it goes away. <laughs> what's going on in that dynamic there? <laughs> what is that? What's happening? Uh, yeah, because uh, it's going to be a bit technical, but let's try to make it easy. Well, why uh, should somebody, why should somebody clear their cache before they contact support for a software product, for a WordPress product? Yeah, so <laughs> I, <mean, laughs> yeah, I agree, Jennifer. Me, me as well. But <laughs> I, I, I do the same. Um, yeah, so because we want to, to make sure so, sometimes, you know, uh, people update things, but they don't use, you know, the versioning of the files to make sure that uh, things are updated. Maybe it happens that some caching plugins have some issues, and sometimes it's happened to WP Rocket as well that the cache is not correctly uh, removed. So we just want to make sure that everything is dynamic. So this is why we we usually do that. Um, and Lifter people, uh, because the website can look very different, whether or not you're uh, a visitor, a user, or and you're enrolled in like a course or a membership. We often tell people, we often teach people how to test in uh, like an incognito browser, even a different browser, so that they know what their website's like for different types of users. Does an incognito browser not have caching in it at all? I'm just curious. Uh, no, uh, it, it does have, uh, it, it depends. Uh, so there is two main reasons. The first one is when you are going to use uh, incognito mode, especially with WordPress. Uh, you won't be logged in, which means that m like 90% of the time you don't, you won't uh, into WP Rocket or, or uh, other caching plugins, you won't have uh, the option to, uh, to have cache when you are logged in, which means that if you're doing things on your uh, caching plugin settings and you go on your, on your website, you will be logged in and uh, you won't have the cache uh, because the plugins will detect it. So that's why we recommend or the people recommend to go into incognito so to, to be sure that you are not logged in into your website and the other thing is uh, since it's a fresh border you won't have any kind of border cache which means that all the css or the javascript won't be stored and so you will be sure to have the, the new content so it's super fresh that makes that makes yeah. a lot of sense um I think you kind of answered it but i just want to make sure i understand i know that it affects other people's questions too if there's dynamic content, like for example, WooCommerce has the My Account page and uh, Lifter LMS has the same thing. We call it the student dashboard. Should those pages never be cached or is there like a user specific cache for those pages or what, what are you saying there? And, and, and people could be like for Lifter, that, that page has so much dynamic content, their progress bars are constantly changing and stuff. Or do they just need to let go of caching those pages or is there some kind of cache opportunity? Yeah, user cache would be ideal, but up to uh, uh, a way it, it would work. But you know, if it's highly dynamic, I mean, if you, in fact, cache is, is um, useful when you go multiple times into the same page uh, which, yeah. with the same content. But 
if every time you do something, the cache is cleared, you need to regenerate it. Uh, so it doesn't make sense to have cache because each time it's going to be removed and you go back and extra, extra. So if it's, if you know that your page is going to change all the time, there is no reason to cache it. And at the end, it will be um, slower because to generate the cache, it's extra calculation. So for these specific things, we would need to, uh, we would recommend to disable it. Uh, but if it's a classic account page, which doesn't change that much, yeah, just enable logged in cache. Logged in cache, gotcha. Yeah. And, um... I want to ask you about it's sort of in the using an SEO plugin as an example. If you install an SEO plugin, there's more to do for SEO than just installing and activating the <laughs> SEO plugin. Yeah. How does it work with using that example? How does it work with WP Rocket? If I install and activate it, what do I get? And then if there's work to do, what are the most important first steps where I can get mm. the most value quickly? Okay. Yeah, so we try to do the opposite. Um, I mean, because SEO is, you, you need to take action and you can't really automate it things. Oh, I mean, you can, but um, with WP Rocket, we took the, uh, the idea to um, follow strictly WordPress philosophy, one of the WordPress philosophy, which is called decision, not action. Um, so we, we think that the and WordPress thing, we just follow that, that the more option you give to a user, um, the more is going to be frustrated because at the point he won't know if he needs to enable this option and he, he will be afraid to break his website. So he won't know and uh, he will think, okay, that's, that's a good product, but I'm not uh, able to use it uh, fully because I can't enable this option because I don't know what it is, but it might make my website faster. Uh, so we took the decision to try to reduce at the maximum the option, which means that when you enable WP Rocket, basically we say about 70 to 80% of the good performances practice and of the option of WP Rocket are automatically enabled. So basically you just have to enable WP Rocket. Of course, there is some extra things we can't really enable by default because that could cause some glitches or some extra configuration. Um, and for this, you can do it. But if you if you don't know, if you're really afraid of, you just enable WP Rocket, and this is going to work from scratch. That's awesome. So it does a lot out of the box just by yes, turning it out on. Out of the box, yeah. And help people understand. You touched on it, but the difference between what a hosting company does in terms of caching versus what you do with your website and mm. a, and, and W a plugin like WP Rocket. Like if I'm um, like for example, like WP Engine and Kinsta or managed WordPress hosting is very popular in the, this community. Yeah. Although, and we also have people on more economical shared hosting accounts. Like how do they think about, cause sometimes there's a shifting responsibility. Like, yeah. well, what right. can they, what should they look to their hosting company? What should they look to the caching plugin? And then what should they look to the tools that they're using to be able to do with performance in mind like mm -hmm. whose fault is it is kind of like the negative way to say it yeah yeah it's uh, usually uh, what we see is um, hosting company don't do that much caching because they they can't really interact with wordpress like they can't really uh, know when uh, a page is updated or all the things they need to to clear uh, so usually the, the, the most common technique they do is they, they are using some kind of micro caching. Like all the content is cached for about 10 seconds, 30 seconds, which has a huge impact and that's working well. Um, and when there is this, so a good example, uh, WP Engine, I don't know if, the, if they are using this, but they have their own static cache system. Um, but we have worked with them to be sure that we are fully com compatible and op optimized. Uh, for uh, to work with WP Engine. And we are the only caching plugin, which is uh, allowed on their platform. Um, and so what we do there is we disable our uh, static cache feature when uh, we detect its uh, website running on WP Engine platform, which means that they can use uh, the benefits of the cache of WP Engine and of all the benefits of the 
uh, other optimization provided by uh, WP Rocket. But you're right, that's usually uh, what we see the difficulties is uh, the, the hosting say, hey, we have cash. Uh, caching plugins say, yeah, but we have cash as well. And it's always complicated. So usually we recommend if your cash, if your hosting solution have uh, some, some uh, built-in cash, we would recommend to use them uh, because they can, we, because we can easily uh, disable our caching system and that, that won't interfere with uh, their uh, solution. So it's better to use them directly. And on our side, we just disable caching and we do all the other optimization system. How does a like an expensive hosting company help with speed? I mean, like when they increase the price of your plan or they say you need to buy more, what are you get actually getting at the hosting level? Uh, I'm not sure. To, could you uh, we, um, say, again, say it again, the, the question? Like it, if you get more traffic and you, concurrent users yeah. and your hosting company tells you you need to get a bigger plan, like well, I guess what I'm saying is what, what does the caching plugin do with when traffic increases mm. versus what does the hosting need to do to yeah. make sure the speed is good? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's difficult to directly answer because the, the, the hosting companies will do so many different things. Um, and let's say most of, basically most of the, the, the hosting companies don't have caching. So they just, they, they just host your website, but that's all. It's up to you to optimize it. And what is difficult is usually they will uh, bill you, mostly manage hosting on the requests you do uh, or on the PHP requests mostly. Um, and if you are able to reduce this uh, by having a caching plugin, you can handle more uh, traffic, uh, but without a bigger hosting or a bigger plan, because you are reducing a lot your uh, PHP requests because all the requests are cached. That's great. Um, one of the things, can you help us understand why sometimes the WordPress admin is slow? And even if that's slow, that doesn't mean the front end of our website is slow. Can you talk yeah. about that? <laughs> uh, because there is no cache on the admin uh, first. Uh, and no, that's just not, that just doesn't exist, right? Or it does exist. No, it, I don't know. I think it should exist, but uh, we don't really recommend it because everything is highly dynamic. Right. Yeah. You are creating content or you're reading new content. So this can't be really cached. And uh, usually the admin is where everything is loaded, like all the option of all the plugins, uh, all the database information. So that's why it's really, really slow sometimes. And yeah, there is a huge amount of MySQL requests uh, all the time. Uh, like for example, there is a, on the, when you are, in most of the pages, there is what we call uh, by what, what what is called sorry by WordPress heartbeat. Uh, so this is a request which is done by your uh, browser to the server, uh, like every thirty seconds to refresh uh, the content. So for example, this is why sometimes if you're on your home page, you will see um, new comments display automatically. That's because WordPress is doing request all the time, and this can make your admin slower because there is all the time request on it. Can you, uh, I just put a link in the chat for everybody who's watching this. You have, WP Rocket has a plugin called Heartbeat Control. What yep. does that free plugin do? Yeah, uh, so the same, this is a feature we have uh, into WP Rocket, like lazy load, but we, we did exclude it. And uh, we give you the ability to disable this heartbeat uh, because this can affect uh, negatively your, um, your, um, your website because it does a lot of requests, MySQL requests. So it can be really useful to have it. I mean, to have Heartbeat uh, if you want to display the latest comment on your admin or you want always be to have all the information, but sometimes it doesn't make sense and you can simply disable it with this free plugin. That's cool. And I wanted to ask you, I want to make sure I understood you correctly. Um, your, your lazy load plugin, yeah. which there's a link to that in the chat as well. Does that retroactively fix images you've already uploaded? Yes, yes, of course, because it's it, it's uh, displayed on your uh, front end. Uh, so whatever the when you did upload it, uh, we don't change your image. In fact, we we do change uh, the HTML of your website on each page. So yes, everything will be uh, applied. That's super cool. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, it seems like that's a uh, the thing that really gets people in trouble is the images. But I wanted to oh, yes. um, I wanted to ask you something here. I've got oh, where to go. I had my um, while I'm finding it. I had a question. Oh, here it is. I'm going to share my screen with you. All right, let me get out of that. Uh, a lot of course creators. Get this up so I can talk at the same time. Um, we don't. We didn't get that great of a score for lifterlms.com. Um, <laughs> but uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you about is related to video. Course creators make a lot of videos. There's lesson videos. Wistia, Vimeo Pro are very popular. People use YouTube videos as well. And if I come down here in my report. Uh, right here, here's Wistia. Like, um, what can we do? Like, what when we're using so much video, what can we do to increase speed? Yeah. Um, so we do have, have a solution for YouTube, uh, which is uh, we are um, lazy loading the, the videos. So basically, we don't load them until you are on it. So this helps a lot. Um, and frankly, I don't think, yeah, we, we are not yet compatible with uh, Wistia. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, which means that right now you, you don't have um, any automatics, automated solution uh, to do that. But yeah, uh, that would be, uh, yeah, maybe using, yeah, I don't know, honestly. Uh, yeah. Well, well, like just to, so people understand, like, I mean, we uh, always recommend that people should not host their own videos like on their own server. So people use Vimeo yeah. Pro or Wistia or YouTube. Yeah. yeah. But still, but an embed comes at a cost, right? Yeah. But if you have a look, it's in fact what is wrong uh, from from your screen. It's not the video itself. It's the JavaScript file. Uh, okay. It, and this is one I can't control because it's Wistia's. Right? Exactly. And yeah. this is what we do implement. Um, and I'm going to, to, to ping our team about that is we have a, a features into WP Rocket, which allow you to uh, retrieve external um, JavaScript files uh, to load them directly from your server. And that's going to be much more faster. That's what we do uh, so far for uh, Facebook and uh, for uh, Google Analytics, we don't do yet for Wistia, but I'm going to uh, ping our team if that's something we could uh, do because that would help you help your website a lot. That's great. Um, why is, I saw this one. Um, the reason I bring this one up is, so this is like a search. So we have our documentation portal. portal. We built it ourselves. And the reason I'm bringing it up here is some course creators or people who have membership sites, especially big ones, they want to do more advanced like searching so people can find courses and training based on certain topics. Yeah. The searching is like a heavy thing to like query the database. Yep. Any tips just around just if you have a search or something that's doing a query of some kind, how yeah. to speed that up? Yeah, don't use WordPress for that. <laughs> <laughs> use Google. No, I, honestly, I, yeah. I'm not really uh, familiar with that. I, I'm, I'm not, yeah, I, I don't have a lot of experience, but WordPress by itself is not efficient and it's not a tool for searching. Uh, I know that on our side, we are using um, an external service, which is called uh, Algolia. Um, yeah. it's, a, it's a great startup, which allow you to, um, yeah, to implement uh, a very fast search into your website and i would definitely recommend uh using this kind of service which would directly um, um query all your content all your database store it and allow you to to search into an instant way of course you would need to load their javascript but the, the search uh, would be fast and efficient which is something which can't be be really done by wordpress itself because it's not uh, a technology to search things. That's awesome. Um, I want to ask you the lazy load plugin that you have. Is that can you use that without using WP Rocket? Or yeah. you so yeah, it's sure. it's something yeah. people can just install and get started with right now. Yeah, away. and for free, just install and you have lazy load. Um, that's awesome. 
And and you said, and the heartbeat control one is another thing you give away for free. Yeah, the same. Yeah, yeah. So that basically what we try to do is uh, taking some core features of WP Rocket and uh, putting them as uh, free plugins uh, in order to um, to provide some good experience to user to users. And if they want more, they can go back to WP Rocket, for example. But not everyone wants to change their caching plugin. So if they want to stay with their other caching plugins, but want to use lazy load, we provide them this ability to do it. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Nigel's saying, thank you for the great information. Yeah, this is a, this is a treasure <laughs> chest of information. Is there, um, I'm just thinking of people who really get into wanting to level up on speed. Do you guys have any community resources like a Facebook group or yep. uh, anything that, yep. uh, uh, while you're getting that, maybe just drop in the chat. Yeah, I just uh, need to, I, I, I don't go that much on Facebook, but yeah, we have, um, we have a, I'm going to search it right now. We have a Facebook group uh, where we share a lot and our users are sharing a lot um, about performance. Yeah, we have uh, this group. We have uh, yeah, 7,000 users uh, where a lot of people are talking about um, uh, performance. And on our blog, we try to share a lot of content related to performance and how to make your website faster. That is awesome. Um, I let you, you covered a lot of this, but I just want to circle back to it. What are your top tips like low hanging fruit? To speed up the website like what if they if somebody's going to do someone's a beginner at speed uh, they're not super technical what should they do uh for, for me the i'm i might be biased um, i might have some bias but install a caching plugin definitely if you don't have just do that and that's going to be a huge change for your website and then after you can dig more uh to be yeah to look for their perfection you know <laughs> on the performance but it's going to be like a big you changer i mean yeah yeah that's awesome um and and should people get in the habit of trying to like do you know this website tiny png yep like i've gotten in the habit most of the time if, as long as i'm not being lazy where i will <laughs> uh run an image through there before i put it on my website yeah is that like extra work if i were to just use like a something like the lazy load plugin or is that a good practice to get into a... yeah so that's two different things so um tiny png is going to reduce the size of image uh, and lazy load is going to not load them uh, or okay. just load them when you need so we would recommend you to do both um, and that's why also we have a imagify and i think tiny png should have a, a plugin wordpress a plugin as well is um when you have the WordPress plugin, they are, the, the plugin is going to do this basically. Uh, opti go through tiny PG of Imagify automatically and optimize them. So if you can do both, that's better. And just so I'm super crystal clear, Imagify is your plugin as well, yes. right? Yes. So the WP Rocket and Imagify and, uh, and just what, what does the, um, the paid version of Imagify do? Um, so it, it does the same. The only difference is uh, in terms of um, quota, how many images you can optimize uh, per month. So, so it's unlimited uh, for, kind of thing or more. Yes, more. Yeah. 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 Uh, for free, you have 25 megabytes, which is about uh, 250 images per month, which is um, usually what, if you have a small website without a lot of images, that's much more, that more than enough. But if you have like huge amount of images every month, uh, you, you need to pay more in order to have more uh, quota available. That's super helpful. And I put a link to that in the chat. That's imagify.io. Yeah. And we have a WordPress plugin. So you can directly install the WordPress plugin and try optimizing your images for free. Cool. And that one is uh, retroactive as well, Imagify? Yes. Yeah. Cool. In, yeah. In one click with the bulk optimization, this is going to go through all your existing images of your media library and optimize them. And if you select it, display them as WebP. Oh, wow. That's cool. And what happens if somebody visits on Safari? Is there a backup version or something? Yeah. Of, yeah. yeah. Uh, we detect that it's Safari. And if it's Safari, we display the previous version, the JPEG, uh, the JPEG version, but which has been optimized. 
Wow, that is that is super cool. Um, awesome. Let's see. There was a uh, a comment on the the YouTube live stream, and uh, Suzanne Susan was saying that cash can impact your cash. So good idea to get it right. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean that's uh it's important. Do you know any of those statistics, or just general rules of thumb? Like sometimes you hear people say things like your conversion rate, the more second somebody has to rate, conversion rates start going down by whatever percentage. Do you know any of those kind of data? Yeah, we have, we have read uh, studies about that. Like Amazon did some tests about like, if I do add uh, 200 milliseconds, how many, um, how many sales do I do less? Uh, there is a huge number. There is, yeah, a lot of numbers about that. On our side, we have read them. Uh, we think they really matters, uh, but we haven't really tested. Uh, but we, what we know is people don't want to uh, wait. Uh, and we see that, I mean, if it's, slow, if it's too slow, uh, we're going to leave the websites and we're not going to buy it. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a big point. And I think one of the things that gets, especially this audience in trouble, is they're often working on a laptop, building websites, you know, making their videos in the home office with good internet and all mm. this. But if somebody's taking the course on a cellular connection or in another somewhere part of the world or that doesn't have the fastest internet, it's a totally different experience of your website. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. And we don't, we, we don't think that sometimes, we know we, exactly you're on your office and everything is fast and, and, and you, you are very happy about your website, but, uh, then you don't imagine that sometimes there are people with very poor internet connection and it's like it's hell and it's not loading at all so they're going to to see someone else <laughs> i mean i'm 41 years old man so i remember when a web page used to load like yeah, one line at a time yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as well yeah uh is there anything we can do by by like um network or whatever so like is there anything that uh, WP Rocket does or any other tips you have for uh, conditionally if somebody is on a slow or cellular connection like I think I think some of the video hosting companies like degrade the quality depending upon how strong the connection is yeah. is there anything else like that that either is happening automatically or that you recommend that we do yeah that, unfortunately that's something we can't have control on because that's really on the let's say on the server and on the hosting yeah, it's not really possible to do that. It's it would be technically possible, but yeah, it's it's very useful in fact for huge files like uh, a video. Um, but if you have a, an image, if it's one image, it won't it won't change. But yeah, that uh, would be a great uh, solution, a great idea to implement as well. I see some people get into trouble with the page builders where they get excited and there's all <laughs> these animations and background <laughs> images and parallax and stuff. And uh, one of the things, I'm not necessarily the best example of it, but sometimes I remove, like in, I've used Beaver Builder, there's, that you can remove, um, I'll, I'll remove an entire row on mobile or like yeah. remove the background image on mobile just to keep that kind of stuff in mind. Exactly, yeah. Awesome. Well, Jean-Baptiste, I wanna thank you for uh, coming on the, on the webinar here. Um, Vidya just has a question here. Um, do you have any special deal for Lyft LMS users? Then it's fine if you don't. You've already given us the special deal of this. I, training. I haven't prepared anything. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I'm going yeah. to I'm going to put my email, and if you want something, uh, you can email me, and I will uh, I will find you a, a special deal for you. Yeah, that's awesome. Appreciate that. Um, and we're going to add this, you know, to our uh, to the areas of our website where we talk about speed vidya says thanks so much for dropping your email in there it's cool you um you're a lot like us where we're, you're in like high contact with the customers and you feel their their needs and where their friction points and stuff like that so vidya says they're definitely signing up um we are gonna pull our giveaway yet yeah, we just pulled it it was jack johnson so you're the winner of the free uh, $99 Lyft LMS add-on, or you can use it as a coupon code. We put a, a message in the chat 
you can just email us at team at lifterlms.com and we'll hook cool. you up. So congratulations on that, Jack. Um, Jean Baptiste, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Um, WP Rocket, that's over at wp rocket.me. Is that right? That's and uh, you can also get started with their uh, the uh, the lazy load plugin, which yep. is called lazy load dash optimize images. That's what it's titled. So you yeah. can find it or in your WordPress just search. There. Search lazy load by WP Rocket into Google, and you should find it. <laughs> and you'll get it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. It was really nice.